Hi guys, good morning and welcome to our school assembly this morning. A very wet and dreary day unfortunately. Reverend Victor here with another school assembly for you. I hope you're all keeping well and enjoying your time at school. Now this morning I'm going to talk to you about superstitions, which is why I'm standing here outside the rectory with my umbrella. Well, the main reason I have my umbrella is because it's raining and I'm keeping the water off me. And that's why we have umbrellas. But believe it or not, there are some silly beliefs attached to umbrellas. Now that's what a superstition means. Maybe some of you knew that, maybe some of you didn't. A superstition is basically a silly belief that some people have. And one of the superstitions about an umbrella is that you should never open an umbrella inside your house. So superstition tells me that when I'm coming into the house, I unfold the umbrella. and keep the umbrella pointed downwards like this and not to put the umbrella up well there's actually no room there to do it but just to show you not to put the umbrella up like that inside the house so this morning i'm going to talk to you about some of these silly beliefs that people have and maybe you've heard of some of them but we look at them now Well, guys, I'm glad to be indoors and out of the rain, and I'm glad that I have my umbrella. I'm sure you're glad to be indoors out of the rain as well. Hopefully, it'll turn out to be a better day or the weather will improve. But anyway, like I said at the doorway there, uh, when I had my umbrella, I wanted to talk to you about some silly beliefs or superstitions. Now, you might be wondering, why am I talking to you about silly things like superstitions? Well, boys and girls, Friday the 13th is tomorrow. Have any of you heard about Friday the 13th being a bad day or an unlucky day? Maybe some of you have and some of you haven't, okay? Well, some people think, first of all, that the number 13 is unlucky. And some people think that the, the, the day, Friday the 13th, is particularly bad or unlucky. Now, you might wonder why that is. Well. Is the number 13 significant in any way? Do you know of any group of 13 people that existed? Okay, maybe some of you guess, okay. How many disciples were there? There were 12 disciples and Jesus, that makes 13. Well, that couldn't possibly be unlucky. Jesus, certainly, no way, but why would people think that 13 was unlucky? Well, do you remember the Last Supper when Jesus had his last meal with his friends? Well, there were 13. Jesus and the 12 disciples were gathered around the table and one of those 13, Judas Iscariot, did you guess that? Judas Iscariot betrayed Jesus. So for many people, that's why 13 is unlucky, because there were 13 people. Jesus and his 12 apostles gathered together that night. That's a belief that they, they have. Now, why would Friday be considered unlucky? Do any of you know? Okay, well, Good Friday was the day that Jesus died. And it was a good day indeed, because Jesus gave his life for us. But some people think that because Jesus was put to death, on a Friday, and also with the connection with Jesus and the 12 disciples, that for some reason, that Friday the 13th is a particularly unlucky day. Now, I'll come back to that in just a few moments, boys and girls, okay? So that's why, if you've heard of the superstition or the silly beliefs around Friday the 13th tomorrow, that's why. But going back to the Last Supper, boys and girls, I have here a salt cellar now. Some people consider it very unlucky if you spill the salt. Now, at the Last Supper, someone knocked over the salt, and that someone was Judas Iscariot. Yes, the man who betrayed Jesus knocked over the salt at the Last Supper. So some people consider it very unlucky if you spill the salt. But really what all that's about is that at the time of Jesus, salt was very expensive. It was very, very hard to get hold of salt. You couldn't just run into a shop and buy a big bag of salt. It was really, really expensive. In fact, many of the Roman soldiers were paid in salt. That's where we get the word salary from. Salary is, is your wages and uh, sal 
is the Latin word for salt, so salary. So uh, sometimes the Roman soldiers were given salt instead of money because salt was so expensive and they were able to trade that uh, for all different things. But that's why really why spilling the salt was maybe considered a bad sign by some people because salt was so expensive. But even likewise, even still today, you hear people talking about spilling the salt. Now, I'll just move on to um, actors and actresses. Have you ever heard of Macbeth, the play Macbeth? Maybe some of you have or some of you haven't. Have you ever heard of William Shakespeare? Okay, William Shakespeare was the man who wrote the play Macbeth. Macbeth was the King of Scotland and William Shakespeare, who lived in the 1500s and early 1600s, wrote a play about Macbeth, the King of Scotland. And this is a very, very famous play, a very famous work by William Shakespeare. And if you haven't come across it uh, later on in your school journey, you'll probably read this as part of your English studies. But this is um, a junior version of Macbeth, which you can come across. I really recommend it. Uh, I won't spoil the story for you, but basically Macbeth, before he's the King of Scotland, meets three witches. So that's why there's three witches on the cover of this book about Macbeth. But to this day, many actors and actresses won't mention the name Macbeth at all, and especially uh, if they're on stage, they'll never use uh, when the, well, I beg your pardon, when they're rehearsing the play Macbeth, because obviously during the play Macbeth, his name has to be mentioned. But anyway, they'll say to one another the Scottish play. So actors and actresses will talk about the Scottish play. They won't mention Macbeth. That's a strange and silly belief that they have. Now, talking about another profession, uh, sailors. Now, here is a fishing boat, or I should probably say a trawler, because a trawler trawls, it drags a net behind it as it's out at sea catching fish. But sailors are very, very superstitious people indeed, and especially around animals. And one of the uh, things they don't like are birds called an albatross. Have you ever heard of an albatross? An albatross is a huge big bird, uh, like a seagull, but sailors uh, consider them unlucky, and they consider dolphins lucky. So if they see dolphins swimming beside the boat, at sea, they think that's a good sign. If they see an albatross, that's a bad sign. Okay, and sticking with sailors. Now, I have here a depiction of a famous boat, the Titanic. Now, the Titanic tragically struck an iceberg in the year 1912 and it sank, and lots and lots of people on board died and lost their lives because there weren't enough lifeboats. Well, to this day, no other ship has been called the Titanic, and still, uh, sailors won't mention the Titanic. Certainly when they're at sea, uh, they won't talk about the Titanic. They certainly won't use, use the name uh, Titanic because uh, they've all sorts of superstitions around that. Okay, I could be here all day, boys and girls, so I'll, I'll finish up nice and quickly with just a couple of these things. First of all, there is a piece of marble, and this is an Irish tradition called a worry stone. Maybe you've heard of that. It's supposed to be lucky if you rub uh, the uh, worry stone. Uh, likewise, here in this piece of glass, I have a four-leaved clover. Have you ever heard anything about a four-leaved clover before? You just cover up one of the leaves and we have a shamrock. But a four-leaved clover is supposed to be very lucky if you find it. And what I find amusing about the four-leaved clover is that it's coloured green. And some people have superstitions around the colour green. Some people say green is for grief. Have you ever heard that expression before? Grief, uh, sadness. Some people won't wear green or have green in their, their houses. Okay, and um, finally this, I have a little bird. This is my owl alarm clock. But some people think it's unlucky if a bird flies into your house. And that's it. Okay, guys, so that gives you some idea of some of the silly beliefs that people have. So I'll just come back, like I said, to Friday the 13th. Well, what I want to reassure you of, boys and girls, and I have the Bible here, is that no day is unlucky. Nothing uh, is unlucky about Friday the 13th. No Friday is unlucky. Friday the 13th is not unlucky. The number 13 isn't unlucky. No number can be unlucky. And likewise, a piece of glass with a flower in it can't be lucky. And likewise, a piece of marble can't be lucky just because 
it's a piece of marble. And like the sailors with the albatross, a bird that God created can't be an unlucky creature. So an albatross isn't unlucky at all. These are just silly beliefs that people have. And just because it's mentioned in the Bible that there were 13 people at the Last Supper or that Judas spilled the salt, that doesn't make those things unlucky in any way at all. God created us, he brought us into being and he loves us and he wants us to do well. He wants us to be our best that we can possibly be. And what that means is that God doesn't want us to sin. So sin, we could say in a sense, is unlucky, doing things that God doesn't want us to do. And that's why he gave us the Ten Commandments. And he said to us things like, don't steal, don't lie, don't say bad things about people that, that aren't true, uh, don't cause conflicts. So all of these things upset God. And we live our lives as best as we can to be good people because God created us to be good. And so as I say, these things can't be lucky or unlucky. They're just pieces of glass and pieces of marble or minerals from the earth, which is what salt is. And Jesus told us in the Gospel of St. John to trust God and to trust him. So we trust God. We turn to God in prayer at times when we're anxious or worried about something. And we trust him and we ask him to help us. And likewise, we also turn to God when we're happy about things and we want to give him thanks and praise. But ultimately, God created us. He brought us into being and he loves us. And that's the important thing. And even people that do wrong, God loves them as well. But he wants them to be good people. And so it's a great thing to help people, to remind people of the things that they're doing wrong and to guide them back uh, into the arms of Jesus so that's essentially what I'm trying to say to you this morning, boys and girls, not to th trust in silly superstitions about Friday the 13th or anything at all like that. Trust in God and all will be well. And finally, just before we say our prayers, what I would like to mention, boys and girls, is I have a picture here of a spider. Now, you may have heard me mention before that I'm afraid of spiders still have an awful fear of them and there's a really big spider living in the garage but I haven't gone near him so he's in there with a huge big web but anyway boys and girls having a fear of something is not the same as a superstition so do you get that many people are afraid of cats or dogs or snakes uh, some people have a fear of water some people have a fear of heights those aren't superstitions a fear isn't a superstition a fear is something that we have that that uh, for whatever reason and we we ask God's help in overcoming the fear so that nothing uh, frightens us or worries us but sometimes we do get afraid of the dark or we're afraid of spiders or snakes as I say so that's not a superstition okay so I hope you understand that now guys we'll finish with our prayers and um, we'll uh, finish first of all with the Lord's Prayer and this day in particular, we um, give thanks to God for the work being done by medical scientists and all the research and the work that they're doing to find a vaccine that is something that will help us fight the coronavirus. So wouldn't that be marvellous if they do, uh, if that uh, vaccine we've heard in the news there lately works, wouldn't that be absolutely wonderful? It will keep people safe and well and mean that we can return back to life as normal. So we give thanks to God. For all the work being done by medical scientists, we ask him to continue to bless, to guide and to inspire them. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now, boys and girls, we finish with the school prayer. This is our school. Let peace dwell here. Let the room be full of contentment. Let love abide here. Love of one another. Love of life itself and love of God. Amen. Boys and girls, I hope you've enjoyed our assembly this morning. God bless and take care. Bye bye.